Oh, this is weird. When's the last time I was on YouTube? Was like probably a year ago. So I feel very Khloe Kardashian esque. I love the braids, I love the big hoops, and I decided to wear makeup for the first time in like a month. Why have I been away from YouTube? What is happening to my channel? Why is it dying? People are asking, why do I have so many subscribers and not enough views? Honestly, I don't know why I have so many subscribers. I actually wish that people who don't watch my videos could unsubscribe. I don't know how to get everyone to unsubscribe. They are not fake subscribers, obviously, like YouTube would have like, like remove those. So I don't know why people like subscribe and they don't watch. And I think maybe part of it is like, I made different kinds of content back then and I don't want to make that anymore. I don't make that anymore. And so maybe people just don't care about watching them. When I started YouTube, it was so long ago and it really made me feel very confident in my own skin. I started with my first video, Growing Up Ugly. And people really liked me because of how authentic and vulnerable I was. It was just like a place for me to feel good about myself even though I've struggled with my appearance my entire life. I've always felt ugly. I never felt like I was good enough. And I always thought if I could achieve this level of perfection in my life, which for me was having perfect skin, being pretty, my life would be so much better. And YouTube was a way for me to kind of help other people. The only way that I was able to get out of this depression was by making videos on YouTube and helping other people because by helping other people, it took the focus away from myself. And so YouTube meant so much to me because of that. And I think where I really stand out on my channel is just how emotionally honest I am. I feel like I really know what I feel and I'm very aware of it. And I think people could resonate with that. But then, you know, a lot of the videos that get good views on YouTube are the ones that are more materialistic, are the ones of reviewing certain products, of showing off different clothes or outfits or all that. Once in a while, it's fun to try out new products and do all of that and review them. But over time, it like really was very, very draining for me. And I just felt like, am I really doing this with my life? Am I going to create 700 videos of me trying on different clothes and telling you whether this lipstick shade is any better than this lipstick shade. Like how many new matte lipstick shade launches do we really need in this world, right? And I just felt like, is this what I'm doing with my life? And I, I didn't like who I was turning into. I feel like a lot of beauty companies perpetuate this cycle of perfection. I was cleaning out my makeup drawer the other day and I actually have like the fewest amounts of makeup that any YouTuber influencer has. Like I don't have that much stuff because I'm very, very picky with what I keep. But it just amazed me the amounts of stuff that I had and the amount of makeup that a lot of people have. And it was like, why do people always try to buy, 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 buy? Why do people want more, 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 more? And the simple answer is because people want to achieve that level of perfection. They think if I have this new eyebrow pencil and it's their new launch, a new formulation, it's gonna be significantly better than the old one. And because I have better eyebrows, then my whole life will be different and I'll be so much happier and all that. And the reality is, is that it's not true. Having more stuff isn't better. Having more of anything isn't necessarily better. And I felt like, I felt like beauty and being a beauty influencer was perpetuating the cycle of you need more, more, more. And then I feel like YouTube, I mean, it's obviously changed, but I felt like the look of what is trendy, what is beautiful has changed as well. You know, now a lot of people, honestly, people are looking so similar. Like I was looking at some Instagram girls or YouTube girls that I used to watch and I hadn't watched for a while. And I was like, oh my God, is that the same person? Everyone looks the same. And I felt like, if I wanted to be successful on YouTube, I would have to change the way I looked to fit in with everyone else. Um, I would have to get big lips and big boobs and a tiny waist and big butt, have really long fingernails, and I mean, just do all these things that I felt like what you needed to do in order to be a successful beauty influencer. And you guys know that when I was younger, I mean, all my life, I never felt like I belonged. I was the only Asian American in my community, in my school. I had acne. I grew up very, very, very poor. Like, I went to the movie theater once throughout elementary school to high school, right? Like one time in my life did I ever go to the movie theater. 
and I've always felt like I don't belong and whenever I feel like I don't belong to something my natural gut instinct is to run away because I fear that if I don't fit in or if I don't if I don't fit into something then I fear being rejected or made fun of and I think that's like a gut instinct for me to like run away from something. The instance where I felt like I wasn't really fitting in with being an influencer and I didn't want to fit in too. I felt like I didn't want to change myself and who I am to fit in so I felt like I just stopped and ran away kind of a little bit. Maybe maybe that's true. It was so crazy because the other day I was at a I was at a, like this networking event and I didn't know anybody there and while I loved the content and the whole event there was this break and immediately when I was at the break I realized I'm one of the only women there I'm a younger woman I'm Asian whatever and I just immediately realized oh my god Daisy you don't fit in and I actually went to the bathroom and I sat in the bathroom for 10 minutes <laughs> I sat in the bathroom for 10 minutes on my phone waiting for the break to be over and it was just it's like it's like even me today, 30 years old, CEO of a multi-million dollar company, I am sitting in the bathroom waiting for it to be over because I have such anxiety when I don't feel like I fit into things. And it was so weird because like the bathroom, it was like my safe place. It was like, I felt this instant sense of relief and I'm like tearing up about it because you never like escape. You never like ever feel like you fit into anything. So. I don't know, I just feel like when I don't fit into something, I just like run away or like do my own thing. And I felt like on YouTube, I had to be perfect. And I felt like I had to be this perfect influencer with this perfect life. And I, I felt like if, if it wasn't going to be perfect, I didn't want to do it. I felt like if, if I cannot be the most successful at it, I don't want to do it. And that's kind of how I am. Like if I commit to something, I'm like all in and I'm very, very picky. And I'm, I have set very high standards and I felt like... I needed to change myself and I didn't want to. Another part of it is I am the owner and the CEO of Banish. And I know I say that a lot, but I'm not just the face of the company, which I think is very different than a lot of other brands out there. They might be the face of the company, but I literally run the behind the scenes. Like I know so much about the business and the company and all that. So every single day, like I am nonstop working and calling the shots and making decisions. And I think at the end of the day, it's so, so draining. It's so exhaustive emotionally. I would say like being an entrepreneur, it's not even the long hours that's hard. Like I can work hard. I can work 60, 70, 80 hours a week. That's no problem. It's the emotional trauma that you go through on a daily basis almost where, you know, you're having to make really hard decisions and things don't happen as planned and people disappoint you a lot of times and I think that at the end of the day you're so exhausted that the last thing you want to do is make a video and try to like make yourself look pretty and be in front of the camera and present this amazing life how everything is going amazingly well and that just wasn't something that I like to do I don't like to pretend things that aren't like, oh, like, I don't know. I just feel like that's not who I am. I, I remember I, I did a bunch of traveling a few years ago and on my Instagram, it might seem like I've traveled so much and had so much fun at these places, but it was literally, <laughs> it was literally, I remember me and my girlfriend, we would curl our hair, like get our makeup done and we just go back to back to back to back to back on like, like on a bus and like just go there, take pictures, leave, go to the next place, take pictures, leave, go to the next place, take pictures and leave. Like. I wasn't actually traveling like and having fun. I was literally like in front of the building looking cute and then hopping onto the next spot. And I think it was because I felt pressured to feel like I was this cool influencer, this cool girl boss who had everything together. And I just, it was just exhausting. It was exhausting because I felt like I was always so preoccupied with trying to appear a certain way. And so I just felt like I just want to stop. I want to stop because it's really exhausting. I'd also want to say that there's something I've learned in the, in the past year that I think is really important to share, which is there's always going to be a struggle in life between those who have something and those who do not have something. And that is why we have two different political parties um, in this country. We think that the rich people should donate to the poor or the people who make extra money should always give to people who don't have it. And then the people who are 
you know, rich are like, well, I work so hard and I've sacrificed everything to get here. Like, why can't I keep my, you know, why can't I reap what I sow? And then the poor people are like, it's not fair while well, I'm here. Like, you know, making only X amount of dollars per hour to do all this work while these people are living these lifestyles that you see on Instagram and stuff. And I have realized that, man, there's always going to be this, this pull, push and pull of people who have and people who do not have. And it's always going to like, this is, I feel like this is like the fundamental of what causes so many problems in life and society. It's all about comparison. Comparison is the thief of joy. And I've even noticed this with my team. Things are good and then they find out somebody gets X amount and they don't have that and then all hell breaks loose. You know, if they didn't know that, then they would have been a lot happier. But now that people know certain things and that certain things are not completely fair, oh my God, all hell breaks loose, right? And so it's really, it's really hard. Um, it's really hard. And I feel like the reason why there's so much drama in the beauty community, it's because there's these YouTube makeup girls who seem to have it all. It doesn't mean they have it all. They have this projection of what it, what it looks like to have it all. They have this projection and people are hating on these YouTube influencers because they seem to have it all. And these people don't have it all. And so they're hating on them and they're trying to take every single chance to sabotage or pull them down. And that's the fundamental struggle of life is people who seem to have and people who don't have, right? I mean, honestly, if these people were successful and like, honestly, if these YouTube gurus and you know who I'm talking about, right? Um, if they were not successful, I don't think people would care so much and people wouldn't be dragging them down, but because they have so much and they show it off and they, you know, people see that and they're very, do I want to say jealous? I don't know. They just think life isn't fair. Then they're going to go all out there. There's so much drama nowadays. It's because people don't like people who have things if it's not fair, right? People don't like things. And I think that's, that's the whole point of the French Revolution, right? The French Revolution, communism, like it's, it's just like a part of history that will never go away. And as long as we have people, <laughs> then there's always going to be people who have more than you and always going to be people who have less than you. And it's so, so, so hard to be happy with where you are. And I felt like being on social media and being an influencer, it's just so weird to like even show off stuff. For example, if you look at my photos, I'm traveling places. I, I seem to live this great life. I literally was not enjoying any of the moment. It was simply for that image. It was simply for the picture. And if people are gonna hate on me and try to drag me down and like try to get after me because I seem to live this perfect life, then what's the whole point of trying to appear like I have it all when it was really, like literally, a lot of it was staged. And so that's why I stopped. I stopped really posting on Instagram. I, I didn't wanna portray like I had everything. It might seem like I have everything or whatever, but it's, it's oh, the journey to that and what I have to deal with on a regular day, I would much sometimes rather just be very, very simple and not have a lot, but not have to worry about it. And it's just this ongoing struggle. You know, that people are always like, why, why do CEOs get paid $100 million a year or whatever it is, you know? Why does the CEO of this company get paid this much and I'm here working minimum wage, doing all this stuff so they can make more so that they can have their beautiful home and their beautiful vacations and all that because you don't see what goes on behind the scenes of that CEO's life. And that constant pressure and stress is so exhausting that at the end of the day, you cannot actually enjoy the simple things in your life, which is the price they pay for having all of those external things. It's really weird because maybe you do have nice things, but like you don't get to enjoy them at all. And sometimes the things you realize that you enjoy the most are the things that you no longer have. I, I think the advice I would give to anybody out there is try to be happy with where you are because the grass is not greener on the other side. I think so many people try to advertise a certain kind of life and they try to advertise a certain kind of appearance in order for you to get you to buy something. And like, don't fall for that bullshit. You know, like don't fall for um, thinking that if only you could live this perfect life you see out there that's 
very artificially crafted that you'll be happy. I, I feel like the people who have the least perfect life are probably the happiest because they're not spending so much time trying to like craft and like craft this like bullshitted image, you know? So that's, that's, <laughs> that's what I would say. I mean, there's just so much out there that's being thrown to us that's telling us we need something in order to fill a void in our life. <sighs> I look at my parents and I look at their journey and I look at their story and it, it really breaks my heart because they're basically, you know, working so hard all their entire life to achieve these levels of su success in their life and then once they get there, they're like, I missed out, you know, basically on my entire life and they don't know how to enjoy things. Like they don't know how to be happy or enjoy the simple things in their life. Like they just don't know how to do it. And it's like, well, why don't we prioritize that first instead of all these other external things? I want to come back here and just do real talk. Maybe I won't review products. Maybe I won't, you know, talk too much about stuff and things. With Banish, I, even though I've said like it's, it's hard, it's difficult, of course, I I feel like this is my path in life. I feel like this is where I'm supposed to be headed and and I was given like the the struggles and the pain in my earlier days in order to be able to walk this path moving forward and I just know it in my gut and my heart this is what I'm meant to do. Um everything has lined up in a way that it has propelled me to that and I would say a huge part of where I am today has definitely been a lot of luck and a lot of just like the right timing in a lot of situations. So I don't wanna to put too much pressure on myself to feel like I have to be a certain way or I have to look a certain way or I have to fit in or I have to have everything be perfect. And I don't wanna make pressure to try to give you guys this external view of what something should be. I wanna be, I don't know, I just wanna be real. I just wanna be real and I wanna try being real about stuff and even with Banish, you know, like we don't have that many products. We have very, very few products and it's because I don't want to perpetuate this. You need more products. You need more skincare. You need more this. Let's launch this. Let's have that. Like, like I'm very, very, very picky, very, very picky. Ask anybody who works with me about everything. So we only like launch one product a year, if any, right? Because I'm so, so, so picky. But I also feel like I don't want Banish just to be about moving products, moving, moving, moving products and just selling products. Like I want it to be real and I want you guys to feel like even if you don't have the Banish products or if you don't have perfect skin or you don't look a certain way, you don't need to achieve that because that's, that's, that's not real. That's not real, you know? What's real is how you feel inside every single day and it doesn't matter how people view you, it doesn't matter how they view you at all as long as you're happy. And that's that's the hardest thing. That's the hardest thing. I was watching these murder mysteries the other day on ABC. <laughs> that's what I do nowadays. I watch all these murder, like murder crime scene shows and the craziest thing, people kill people to maintain an image. Can you imagine that? People become like serial killers or like what's the motive behind people and their actions? It's literally, it's always because someone has something that they don't have. There's that comparison, right? And they think that they deserve it. And they're gonna go out and go on this killing spree to get what they want. And it's just like, oh my God. Like realize whatever the people have that you don't have is not all it seems. It's probably way worse than your life. So, <sighs> okay, just <laughs> stop going on a tangent, Daisy. So thank you all for watching and I will talk to you guys very, very soon. Bye.